guys, welcome back to Fun World. I'm Amisha, and today I'm going to show you how to make this spectacular midnight snowstorm scene. Um, I understand that right now most people are in lockdown because of the coronavirus. I certainly am, and if you are and you're bored like me, making this painting is a great way to pass your time. You can do it with your family. It's a super fun family activity. It's very fun and very easy. So let's get started. For this painting, we are going to be using a tissue, palette knives. Now you don't need all these. You may only need one, which you'll find out later. Uh, the paint brushes, I will tell you as I go. Water and masking tape is optional. This is optional. I am also going to be using a palette. And my palette, if you do not have a palette, you can always use a paper plate. But this is my palette. And I'll show you the colors as I go. Because sometimes I add colors or I, or I decide I don't want a certain color. So... This step is optional. I just like it because it gives an outline to my painting. I'm going to take masking tapes and I'm going to put it around the borders. And if you don't have masking tape and you really want this touch, you can also use um, normal tape. It will not work as well, but it will still work. So here I put on the masking tape and I did the step after that. For the step after that you need to put these colors. Well first I made like a very slight invisible horizon line which is invisible to the camera because it's extremely light. But I put some colors here. First on the very top I have my darkest shade of blue which is Admiral Blue. Next I have two blue. And then I have purple pansy and then I just have regular violet. Now for the next step, if you have, if you don't have a stretch canvas, because this is a stretch canvas, and you have the other type of canvas, you can use a palette knife, like this one, to smooth it out, but I don't have that type of canvas, so instead I'm going to use a paintbrush. So I'm going to start from the top and just blend it on toward the bottom. Here I have blended all my colors, so when your painting is mostly dry, my top is still a little wet, but that's okay because I just need the bottom to be dry and that's pretty much dry. You can take a mixture of violet and two blue, and when you mix those together, you should get this short, sort of bluish purple shade, and this is what we're going to use to make our are trees in the background and this will be hardly noticeable but it just gives the painting a little bit of depth so for the trees you're going to take your paintbrush you're going to stroke like this but make sure you just because they're in the background doesn't mean that you can go really, 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 really careless on these because you should practice these because these are practice because later in the painting we are going to make like black trees in front of these, like blacky greenish trees that are going to be our real pine trees. So here I have made all my pine trees and as you can see there are some gaps. So for that, the next step is to take some paint on your flat brush and we're just going to make little lines here and there. Make sure they're kind of thin and don't make too many. These are going to stand for the bare trees. And if yours are a bit too light like mine, you can add some purple, some dark purple, and add a bit of blue to it can use that to add some highlight because now that it has some purple it'll help. Okay so once you're done with that part the next step is to let it dry a bit. The next step is to take a bit of blue and just like brush it on the end which is also barely visible but it just gives a bit of depth. All of the stuff that we do in this painting that is barely visible is to give the painting depth. Next step 
is the white acrylic paint and we're going to put it all the strip up. A bit more here and down here. Then on the bottom we're going to add some two blue. And now again if you have a palette knife you can use it. If you don't you don't have you can just use a paintbrush, but I have one, so I want to show you what it's like to try to use a palette knife on a canvas like this. It doesn't really work. So you can use it to spread it out a bit, but it doesn't work that well if you have a stretch canvas like this one. So instead, we're just going to use a paintbrush, a thick flat paintbrush. Just gonna blend it upwards. Then I'm gonna wipe my brush. Blend. Don't worry about making this part perfect either because this is snow and this is supposed to be a bit lumpy. And we're going to add the lumps now so for this part it doesn't matter if you have a stretch canvas or whatever type of canvas but you need to take a palette knife and you need to take white acrylic paint remember your brand or anything doesn't matter remember when you're using a palette knife always squirt your paint like in a line not in a hole because if you do it in a hole it's hard to get it so if you do it in line you can dip a very small palette knife this is a size one palette knife here and you can just use it to add a bit of dimension And if it's going a bit too white, you can add a hint of blue on your palette knife before you start. Just a little hint. Like this much. I just added a hint of blue. And now on top of that, I'm going to add some white so the blue just serves like as a primer. And I know it's not winter, but that's fine. You can still paint this. I will see you guys in a bit when I am done. So the next step is, um, once you're done giving texture, make sure that when you give texture, you give the most amount of texture to the top because that's the place where the snow is falling and the bottom is just like the bottom. And so the next step is you can see from the top I have a bit of rough lines and we want we don't want those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some I'm going to use a very thin brush. I'm going to take some blue and take some white. See what color that makes. A bit more white and I'm just going to make some like squiggly lines some rough lines so it seems like that's supposed to be there because that's just the snow so we want to make that try to blend in with this and just make it look like some snow so that way we don't see the rough lines the next step is as you can see i've already done it off camera because i didn't want to mess it on camera i've made the outline of a house now this house, I've just made it white over here, just made a little curve here, and then made it a bit 3D. So the next step is, once you've made your house, take a thin brush, paint the roof white. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you bright red for the house. Now I don't really have any other shade of red, because currently my other red, it, I ran out, and I don't want to go to this... I don't want to go to the store to buy some more. 
of the fire, so I'm going to use this. And if I want to make it darker, I can always add a bit of brown. So I'm going to take my red, paint it. Now I don't like this because this looks a bit too light. So I'm going to add just a hint of brown, like slightest hint. I have my red on the side and I'm just going to add like slightest hint of brown. Just a little. Just the slightest hint. Mix that up and if you still don't like your color, you can add some more brown or add some white to make it lighter. Whatever suits you. I mean, this is looking... So if you have a situation like this where you already put on your paint but you still don't like it because it looks a little light, you can just add a little brown over it or a little red over it. I'm just going to add a little more paint. So here I have finished adding all my red. Now if you can see this doesn't really look like it's in the snow because the end is kind of wonky. You, can make, you need to make it straight. And now, right now, it just looks like a kind of mushed up house. So, while your paint is still wet, take just a little, little, little dip of white and use it to, like, make a separate in the walls. So, it should end up looking kind of like light paint. Actually, this isn't going to work on wet paint. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that paint dry and I'm going to come back to it later. But while it's going to dry, we're going to wipe our brush and I'm going to take my white and you see the roof that I roughly did before I'm going to go back fix up the roof next you're going to go here and you're going to just make some outlines and make make the white a bit more sharper because before I just roughly very very roughly made an outline so now I'm just going back to perfect that a bit I'm going to color this side of the roof white. So the next step is, once yours is dry, mine is mainly dry, we can take our thin brush, we can take some red paint, mix it with some white, and make like a light red shade. Some white, mix in some more white. Mix in all the white on this palette. I'm going to make it extremely light. I think this is light enough. Once you get your desired color, you will use you can use it to make like the wall sort of things. So it looks like it's been separated a little. It's not just one big house. There's actually walls to the house. Make the windows and doors. Here's a tip, when you're painting, it's always best to keep white in the middle because white is a color we use a lot to make colors lighter and darker. So instead of having to scoop it up from one hole, you can just have it here. And it's easier, trust me. Now you can use white to make two little squares that will represent windows. The next step is to take a fine brush, like this one, because now we're doing trees. Some black, and you will add a hint of dark green, just a hint. That is way more than a hint, but that is okay. Well, the next step is to use this shade, make sure your brush this point is really fine. And we need to make some trees. So for the trees, remember, we're going to make um, a little triangular top. going to come to the side here and we want to make this tree seem like it's cut off like the rest of it is cut off from this painting make sure it's not a straight line like this make sure that as you progress towards the bottom your spikes get longer and longer
There we go. Don't add too many branches, otherwise they may get a bit crowded. The next step is a bit of a scary one. All the trees up here were just practice. Now it really comes down to a big, big, big tree right over here. Now make sure you take your time with this. In the top, for this tree, this one's going to be a bit special. We're going to take black, dip our brush in black, then we're going to add some green to our palette. And we're going to take just a dip of green and a dip of black. And then we're going to start painting. Make one ring in here. Take your time on this one because this is a is like the main star. Okay, right now I roughly did that, but now I'm going to add some green. So, here I tried my best to do the tree. For the tree, I did end up putting a bit of blue in the green and then going over with the black, which is hard to see on camera, but it's not hard to see in real life. Next up is I'm going to take my number one palette knife and I'm going to add white paint on the top and I'm just going to, I'm going to do this tree later from the top. I'm just going to start adding little white specks of white to represent snow. Snow has fallen and it has been on the trees. It's stuck on the trees. I added some little specks of white and the next step is to add some to the tree at the bottom. Now on the top, if your top is a bit wacky like mine, just add some white on the top. Seems like it's supposed to be like that. There we go. And now the next step is really, really, really fun because now we're getting down to the wire, we're getting down to the end because it's one of the last steps. Here I have made my moon. The next step, and if you're if you try to do a, a crescent moon like me, and that does not work out, you can make it a bit fatter, or if it doesn't work out at all, you can turn it into a full moon. But I am happy with mine, so I'm not going to mess with it. The next step is to take a toothbrush. Not, I wouldn't recommend one you've used because that's sort of disgusting. I've had this toothbrush for art for like a year now and it works perfectly fine. I have a toothbrush. I'm going to add a bit of white paint. That wasn't any. Add a bit. I'm going to smear it with my finger. And I'm going to do this to the bristles a bit. Just to make the snowy effect. Don't go overboard with this though because I have a habit of going over overboard with snow and it's not pretty. The next step is to add a bit of highlights to the to to the snow as star. So I'm gonna add some paint on the bottom of my brush and I'm just gonna Yeah. For stars. Next step is to take your brush. This is optional. You can add a bit of white paint and just make like a plus sign. So I feel like I'm done with my painting. Do not throw away your masking tape quite just yet. You'll see why in a minute. So I have removed the masking tape and my masking tape did not work that well. So in order to fix that, we're going to take the masking tape we had before, place it on top, get a paintbrush, the, the size or anything, doesn't matter, a white paint, and just paint that white. Now the next, this is the final, final, final step. This step is optionary, but I always like to do it because it adds a nice gloss to my paint. 
I am going to be adding some liquid Mod Podge on this because what the Mod Podge does is right now my paint is looking a little crusty and it can easily be chipped off. If I add the Mod Podge, it'll add a nice shine to it. It won't be looking crusty and it won't chip off at all and it'll give it and it'll last longer. So what I like to do is I pour my Mod Podge in the lid. And I like to use a sponge brush. You can use a paintbrush if you don't have one. And make sure your paint is dry before you do this though. I just Okay guys, well that's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. Let us know what you want to see in the comments down below and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Bye.